I just remember coming to and the ambulance going, <gasps> gasping for breath and they're going, oh, we thought we lost you there. <laughs> so, interesting. I was with a friend on the back of his bike, essentially, and um, in brief, a drunk driver came in the other direction. He had a head-on with us and then a head-on with the car that was behind us. So I became a bit of a meat in the sandwich and um, broke most of the bones in my body. Yeah, got revived twice on the roadside by the ambulance service, or by, once by a doctor, because it was close to Guy's Hospital, and then once being put into the ambulance, and then possibly again once at the hospital. So I was told I wouldn't walk and all the other things, uh, you know, wouldn't be able to do most stuff, but I was determined to prove that wrong. I just wanted to be as normal as I could. I didn't want to be a statistic in a wheelchair, you know, I felt I had too much still to do and achieve and um, yeah, managed to get lots of therapy and um, lots of great NHS support and um, got back out there, got back up, signed myself off the disability benefit and uh, went for a part-time job as a barista in um, Portobello Road at a coffee plant and they roasted their own coffee so quickly became assistant roaster and it was a direct gas flame a galvanised water pipe with holes drilled in it and then this washing machine drum tumbling around inside throwing beans around it with a little uh, a little hatch with door hinges on it so you had to stop it with a fire glove the light switch stop it have a quick look pull out a sample shit get it out spin it around one more and get it drop it out to a tray underneath and then you'd cool it by shaking it like this and all the chaff would come off it so Pretty rudimentary, but it worked, and that, that's what taught me, you know, anything's possible. And uh, I thought it was a bit of a wasted opportunity. There was no branding, no marketing, and uh, no kind of real kind of scientific principle behind it. And um, I actually broke away from there and set up Full Steam Espresso Limited, and then um, went on to make my own blend, the Full Steam Espresso blend. And at that stage, I bought the Arpe as well, registered the brand name and uh, started selling it, selling it in the street and uh, selling it to a few cafes. And at that stage, I lived up Rosendale Road, so I'd, I brought the Arpe up on the weekends there onto the pavement, and that was the first ever uh, shop. <laughs> and um, I had my eye on the trading estate at Parkour, such a cool building, this 1920s kind of art deco building that was full of artists and artisans and I wanted a ground floor unit in there and they were really hard to come by but one came available and I'd been chatting up the uh, Zimbabwean gate man and he was facilities guy and so he got me in which was great. The equipment came next so I moved into the site and um, that was eBay and uh, this advert came up and I looked at it and it was a picture of kind of like Barbie dolls, toys and you know, children's garden play equipment. And then the middle of it looked like a coffee roaster. That's <laughs> the face of a, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine type thing. So I yep, emailed the guy and said, is this a coffee roaster you have there? And all he responded with was, what you see is what you get. And I was like, yeah, okay, it's got a 400 quid asking price on it. I'll just put in 400 quid and look away and see what happens. So I waited until the last second and no one else bid on it. So I won it. Hired a van, took Olaf, pretty sure I took Olaf with me. And he came and helped me load it in. And yeah, brought it back, put it in the roastery. Sort of rudimentary, but it was quite techy at the same time. It had kind of digital readouts and stuff like that with it. So it was, it was kind of controllable. Olaf had, you know, been by my side as a mate the whole time anyway on the coffee journey and because him and I had you know so many similarities in, in what we were doing and what we wanted to do and growing up together with Vespers and Lambrettas and coffee machines and, and having left behind the whole kind of the early days of the specialty coffee movement in New Zealand you know we both had a kind of a shared vision and mission so it was kind of like didn't take long before him and Emma you know came on board and and that sort of really helped, really helped the kind of business acumen of the business and, you know, systems in place and stuff like that. 
I want to want to be recognised as kind of a dynamic company and sort of kind of like a a market leader for all the right reasons, you know, for for still being real, for still being real people with you know real passion, not just market generated passion. You know, that's passion passion that comes from the from within, and you know, and to have a product that's recognised for that as well, because people can taste that stuff. You can taste it. <laughs>